All right, I am getting hand waves at me that we are live. Um, so once I get confirmation that people can hear me, we will get started. This is always my favorite part. I think I say that at the beginning of every single stream. That awkward moment where you're just waiting for someone to say they can hear the voice coming across the interwebs. And see, now Jonas and Hans get to join me in this awkward moment because uh, they're also here waiting for confirmation. All right, people can hear us. Welcome, everyone. We are on dev stream number 13 today. I have two special guests with me. I have Hans, our wonderful combat designer, who seems to be in a uh, render of the war camp. And I have Jonas um, with his awesome uh, background with all his companions and best friends. And uh, uh, it's great to have you guys both in the stream today. How are you guys doing? It's always great to be here, Brad. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. Hans, we, you actually uh, spent quite a bit of time together this weekend doing all the... There was a lot of uh, streams going on. You and I were chatting with people. We had a good time this weekend. Yeah, I mean, uh, how, how was it possible to, to have anything else but a good time? We were watching people playing the game for the first time, and it was just really nice to see people enjoying it and to help them out with a few struggles they had. And whenever they had questions from chat, we could be there, and uh, it was a great time. Nice hanging out with you on uh, in chat. Yeah, this is, uh, it's been quite the exciting last, um, I want to say like five days, four or five days now. It's now Wednesday, so it's been a little bit longer than that. But actually having the, the public demo live, having some, uh, a, a number of partner streamers playing the game for the first time. This is the, you know, the, the kind of, uh, uh, you know, big moment for all of us in the project because you, don't, you never really know, you know, you love what you work on and you do some focus tests and you get some opinions, but... Until it really goes out there into the public's eye, there's always that like, oh man, are people, is it going to be okay if people are going to really like it? I mean, what were the nerves like for you guys? I mean, Jonas, what was it like for you on Friday when the, when everything first went up? There was a lot of jittery energy in the office. I think like I was pacing back and forth, kind of like looking at uh, what people were doing, tuning into the streams and so on. Um, it was it was I would I wouldn't call it nervous, but I would say definitely. Um, yeah, high energy. Uh, it was really nice to see all of the positive feedback start to flow in. Uh, of course, we knew that we were putting a really cool game out there for people, but it's good to see that they, that it's received in, in kind. So that was great. Yeah, how, how was it for you, uh, Hans? And, and by the way, for, for people, I'm sure everyone that's on the stream knows, but there is a, um, a, a live demo available now to download for free. There's quite a bit of content in the free demo, so... Um, encourage you to check it out on Steam, um, the Expeditions Rome demo. Hans, how was it, you like, was it like for you on Friday when things first started going up and you first started seeing people play it live for the first time? I mean, that was super exciting. Actually, before uh, the game got to be played by a bunch of streamers on, on Twitch, one of my personal friends from the Netherlands, I asked him, like, okay, is this download working? Because... Where like as you want said, slow the jitter started coming into the office. It was pretty quiet. The game's been running pretty smoothly, and we've been polishing for a while. And then suddenly, it's like, wait, it's now that there's a download button. People can play this now. So I, I kind of poked one of my friends to quickly get it on Steam, and then he started streaming it uh, through Steam just for me. And then Jonas and Casper and a bunch of us devs was just watching him while he was kind of cold sweating trying to get through uh, the common encounters, and um, that was a really good time. Well, today, for uh, those that are on here, we're going to be showing um, some brand new gameplay footage. We're actually going to be playing gameplay almost the entire stream today um, after our little introductions and uh, showing off an, an encounter in Memphis. So uh, the demo was placed uh, in the beginning of Greece. You can play Lesbos, and for some that caught some of the partner streams that we did over the weekend, they got a little more content in Greece to go through. But no one's really messed around in Africa because they haven't been allowed to. So we're going to show some live... Uh, gameplay from Memphis. We're going to be talking about how we build great combat encounters. There is an exciting Dev Diary Live right now if you want to read more about this. So uh, our community site, community.expeditionseries.com, has a Dev Diary that you can uh, plug into and uh, read about how we build great, how we've tried to build our encounters in Expeditions Rome and get into the mindset of, of these two gentlemen and how they approach it. But we're going to play uh, a, a, a game or a, an encounter here for the very first time. No one's seen this before, I think, outside of the team. So this, will be, uh, this is kind of exciting. Uh, you want to maybe set a little bit of the stage for what we're going to show today, maybe. What, what is this encounter all about? This is one of my favorite encounters in the game, which is why I chose it, obviously. But it sort of came together quite 
recently with one of the last sort of passes that Hans uh, made on it. Uh, that's where it really started to come into its own. And uh, this is in this is part of a main quest where you're trying to win the favor of some of the the temples in Memphis, which is this very famous ancient religious um, pilgrimage uh, city. Basically, mm. it has a bunch of different temples dedicated to old gods and new gods, and the pharaoh is trying to. Um, well, I won't give too many, away too much of the main story, but suffice to say, you are there to gain the, the favor of these temples. One of the temples is the Temple of Ubasti, which is purely staffed by priestesses. And in order to gain their favor, they've asked you to help one of them free these lions that have been caught uh, for, for, the, for the arena to be used uh, in gladiator fights. So you're there meeting this priestess there to raid this compound and free the lions. Well, let's go ahead and turn the. I, I know I have a producer Nadine is helping me today. Alex is uh, as as turned over the reins to Nadine, so we have a new, not new, but uh, someone a little bit different today. Uh, so Nadine, why don't we go ahead and throw uh, up the game stream, and we'll uh, show a little bit of the world here as 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 Jonas is talking about. So this is actually a really really pretty map. Um, there's a lot of color and texture in the map that I think is really nice. I mean, do you have a particular part of the map that that you like, uh, Hans? That maybe you. Uh, that I should point out before we start getting into the actual gameplay part? Mm, I don't know if you have it revealed right here, but oh, you do. Right in the center of the map, something you can't help but stumble on is like the main market square where people both hang out to, well, go to the market, but also for socializing and it's right in between all the different temples. And it just kind of shows how uh, Africa and Egypt as its seat of power is like a, a place where a lot of cultures come in. You have both like influence of the Roman Empire, um, you have influence from Egypt, which was largely Greece uh, at that point in history, but then you still have remnants of how Egypt was before um, Alexander the Great kind of made it more uh, Greek in, in style of culture. So like, I think this place just shows off kind of all of those mixes and it's great. Yeah, I love all the little details too, man. Something that I, I feel like the art team did a great job with and it's been it's been actually really um, uh, exciting to see all of the comments from people as the game has been streamed and and everyone's. I mean, I, I've heard compliments about the art style over and over again, and it's been very humbling. I mean, August and the team should be really proud. I mean, even the animations and just how organic everything feels. It's just, it's really, really. Uh, it just creates that atmosphere. I think that brings you into the world. There's definitely a lot going on in this map. One of the things people were asking after playing the demo is. Will there be exploration in the game? Because the demo, of course, being the beginning of the game, it, it, it holds your hand a little bit as you move through the intro. But this is an example of a hub level that we have several of in the game, which are very large sprawling levels that you can explore freely and find people to talk to and side quests to do and so on. We're not going to show a side quest today, but suffice to say, if you poke around the corners of this map, there'll be things for you to discover. So. So that's really our, our, our whole uh, stream today and, and the dev diary is really all about, um, you know, how we set up these kind of combat spaces. So um, I think that was part of, um, you know, a little bit what we're talking about when it comes to the place setting and everything. That was one of the topics we talked about was just building the narrative context for an encounter and how you inform that. And I think, you know, that's some of what you were kind of setting up here before is that there's, there's things that are going on in the world when you explore that kind of make the combat encounters feel very connected to the narrative because we are a role-playing game I mean that's a big part of the fantasy yeah and in this case um, this sense of there being a guarded compound that you're trying to breach into is something we tried to create here so there are walls and buildings all the way around this courtyard that you're about to enter um, that's that's how the layout supports the narrative of you attacking these these hunters and trying to free these lines it's almost like you're you're doing a prison break um, for the animals yeah, yeah. By the way, I, I, I have a, you know, a, a big multi-crane setup here to do all this shenanigans, so uh, if I'm looking up in this direction, it's because that's where my game stream is right now, so I can pass that through and everyone can watch it. I'm, I'm, I'm looking up at the game. So before we go into the combat itself uh, and the encounter, I think maybe we should start with, you want to like um, uh, give a quick uh, preview to everyone about kind of how the, uh, the skills and everything are set up for these characters, because that may help with uh, some of the framing a little bit, like who yeah. everyone is and how they're built. So I actually let you, I let the game pick random skills for you, which I think will be really interesting to see how you use them. There's a system okay. for how it does that. It's the same as when you use auto level uh, for, your, for your characters in the game, which I don't, I don't think you have access to that in the demo, but the streamers would have had access to it. 
Um, so yeah, you have some some um, some very generalist builds. You, uh, I made you a Velas, which is the light infantry class, because especially in this encounter, having a lot of movement is really interesting. I'm interested to see what you spend it on, like where you put your characters. Uh, and other than nice. that, um, they are pretty classic setups. So Kaiso has a very broad build. Um, Kaleda is a little bit more specced into one of the specific trees. Um, and then I gave you a little bit of, uh, of unique items and so on, so that you're not just using generic equipment. Oh man, you gave the marathon skill, huh? Make oh, sure that's... you have marathon, yeah, because that's one of the really interesting skills in the game. So we'll see. I'm always scared of using marathon. Oh man. Uh, I think it's interesting what Jonas mentions with movement because movement is really powerful when you utilize the right way, but on, on its own it does nothing. You don't deal damage or solve any problems by just running around people, right? So you need to see yeah, like yeah. where where is the like the powerful thing that you can reach, whether it be from a combat object or a positioning uh, cover that kind of exposes the archer so you can go sit afterwards. Like you need to see what you can do with that movement first, and then marathon as the skill you have really. Um, Goes all the way. So, uh, for what it's worth, chat. Like, I'm actually um, uh, Jonas uh, in his, his great um, infinite wisdom provided this save file to me this morning. So I have not had a chance to really look through all the skills. So this is like, um, I mean, it's appropriate because it's the holidays. It's kind of like Christmas in Rome. Um, I have no idea what I'm opening up here and what I'm going to get to play with. So we're we're kind of doing this a little bit together. Like I, I'm I'm very quickly looking through and I'm hoping I don't make myself look uh, foolish during the stream when I play this thing, because I don't know exactly what I'm built as. I did notice when we were doing prep that um, you had um, my main character set to unarmed to start. Um, oh, that's just an oversight on my part. Uh, okay, I thought you were trying to challenge me to use unarmed at the beginning of the encounter and see if I could pull it off. Well, well I just wanted to make sure you had unarmed skills that made sense, like aid and so on. Yeah. So and I would compare, look, have a look at your regular skills, and then compare them to the, to your unarmed skills, because I don't think um, you should neglect those uh, if you just compare the damage numbers. I think, uh, yeah, I'll look at that. I'm, I'm just trying to like really quickly get myself up to speed on what in the world I'm built now. But I think this is a pretty straightforward build. I mean, most of this is not anything to... I noticed so, that, the, that there were a couple weapons, though, that had some extra things, like... Uh, Taunt when you crit. Yeah, I wanted to give you a few. Why? Um, you, can set your, you can set an enemy on fire. To, so a lot of you are getting previews of some of the more advanced stuff that shows up in the game. It comes like uh, Try and okay. swap yeah, the other set. Uh, he has a uh, unique weapon there as well. <laughs> Whoa! What is this? Jeez. So He's I think it's a this arm. That's, wow, that's crazy. As a fun fact, Brad, uh, very often how we would actually test a lot of the, the game, especially combat, is with these random setups that we have. And that way we would ensure that we get to mix as many skills as possible. And also be that you can kind of, if you can beat the game with this and it being really hard, then you know that it'll be a little bit easier once uh, once you have a proper build set up. Um, but we would get to experience a bunch of combos of skills by almost always having like random builds being set up for, for us. All right. Well, let's go up and uh, and and just trigger this encounter, and then we'll start going into the, in the, in some of the specifics about how we built this thing. So, um, Aldilian says, "I believe spears are the anti-armor weapons." Is that true? I mean, spears have a couple of different purposes. Is it, is it primarily anti-armor? Pikes specifically. Uh, so it's important to distinguish between spears and pikes because pikes are the really long ones. They're two-handed. Spears are one-handed weapons. You can use them with a shield or with another um, dagger. All two-handed weapons in the game shred armor. Uh, so that would be pikes and staff. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's talk hey, to Rian. So I'm all set. There aren't too many people around. Yeah. So once we set we the lions free, free, they should have should a clear have path, path out of the city, city alone in the island. The lions are kept at the back. The poor, poor things. things. If, if you beat, you up, beat up the hunters, I will, I will unlock the cages. cages. So I guess there's something here where you're trying to set lions, I guess, as part of the plot line. Um, not too many spores. It's a good like mission that doesn't, you know, speak too much to the big plot. You're just on a side quest almost, right? It is almost a side quest that's built into the main quest, yeah. We have sound rebound. Oh, that may be me. Hold on, let me turn down okay. a little bit. That's my problem. Same audio from your mic, yeah. All right, so let's do. Uh, okay, let's. 
Please explain, well, Johnny Hollett. First of all, lions will definitely kill you before they eat you. I assure you that is false. I have heard many gladiators scream in agony while they were eaten in the arena. But the agony, I have a way with cats of all sizes. I'll do what I can to keep them from eating you. Just stay out of their way as much as you can. So, fun fact. Um, this encounter that we're going to talk about... Yeah, perfect, uh, 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 Virtuous. I'm glad. We were actually discussing this in the pre... Uh, this encounter used to be very, very different about a year and a half ago. Um, and uh, it, it's... Uh, the, the the whole line eating there was a whole like three way fight a long time ago where the lions and you and the enemies were all kind of in the mix and the lions were eating you I remember the first time I played it I got my I got my butt kicked by the lions themselves and I remember talking to Jonas about it after that that build delivery I'm like man those lions are brutal dude like I don't know if I can handle so I think we've changed it um, uh, because of that feedback it didn't it was a little bit hard to balance the lions and the enemies both going at you at the same time yeah you want to talk a bit about that Hans since that's more your area. Well, um, as much as possible, we try and keep these, uh, every encounter as handcrafted as possible, either in enemy composition, through the layout, or in this case, with driving a lot with a narrative. And since you're going to free lions, uh, the first go-to we had when we were brainstorming the actual mission was that you would have to kind of do an escort mission of the lions, only the lions were your enemies, so they would take turns, and they could either be attacking the, the guards of the arena, who, of course, would be trying to prevent you from, from breaking out their lions, but the lions could also try and kill you. So ideally you should acro those lions and then kite them to the to the exit of the arena. And I think it would have been a lot of effort to make that work. Like in theory, it, it sounds really fun, um, but I think we would have to delve into a very unique AI and a lot of edge cases. So we ended up doing something where we could more easily just fit into Memphis and make it a, an encounter we, we knew were, was, was interesting. Yeah, Bar Flame CZ immediately asked, like, as soon as the lion topic came up, the first comment in chat is, can you release the lions from the cages so they'll attack your enemies? And that was the idea. The problem is, lions attack you too? And I mean, imagine doing an escort quest, where the escort that you're trying to get across and protect is also trying to kill you at the same time. Like, it was... I think it would have... I think we may have gotten it to work if we had spent a lot of time on it, but we decided to simplify it a little bit. We had a big game to make. Uh, but we did try. We did try... So yeah, you could release the uh, the the um, the lions and, but I mean, lions are gonna be lions, right? Like lions do what lions do. And that's the advantage of a quick um, prototyping process. Is we we set up that fight using placeholder assets in a level, yeah. and then we could immediately see, ah, oh, this is just this is not gonna work. This this sounded like a fun chaotic kind of situation, but in practice it was just super frustrating and annoying to deal with. So we knew we had to rethink it and do something else. Yeah, Far Flames, these, so, I mean, yeah, it's definitely, um, <laughs> it was fun in a sense of, like, the fantasy of it, but it was way frustrating, and I think that was the problem that it had, everyone that we focus tested it with, it's like, it's, you're trying to protect something that's also trying to kill you, and it was, it was, it was difficult to figure out how to make that, uh, exciting, but, let's, um, let's go into this next encounter and talk about it, um, yeah, the game, so, uh, Mu, Mu Regen Boo Boo asks, uh, how long the game has been in development, I know that, um, there was a pretty long pre-production process that we started working together kind of at the, I want to say kind of halfway point of that maybe, or a little bit further than that, but um, uh, the, as far as we've been together, uh, all the whole, this whole team has been about three years, I think, a little, little less than. We started pre-production back in 2000, was it, was it 17 we released Viking? It, I think it was. Yeah, it must have been um, 17, yeah. And we did spend six months in pre-production while we were doing support on Viking and updating it and um, all that stuff. We were also writing design documents and prototyping um, Rome. And actually, we started prototyping in Unity before yeah. partnering with THQ, and then we switched to Unreal, fortunately. So um, yeah, it's been technically in development for like four years, but um, actual full development has been, I think, three, two, three and a half, two and a half, three years. Yeah. Yeah, when I first started, it was about three years ago with you guys, and it was, um, we were still in pre-production, but it was more real pre-production. We were building levels, we were um, uh, concepting assets, getting our art style locked in, um, and we had already moved over to Unreal, so I remember the first prototype I ever played of Rome was in Unity, but we immediately were moving it to Unreal almost right away, so that was, uh, um, that's where things really kind of took off from there. So yeah, about, hope that answers your question, about three years in real development uh, with pre-production total is probably about four. Which is 
I hope twice so. as long ah, as Viking. Just like the we good only old. worked on yes. Viking for a year and a half. So let's um go ahead and move up here in the encounter a little bit. Um, oh, awesome! You have someone that was a backer of Conquistadors in chat. Oh, that's um, weird. Yeah, yeah. I said that they've got the the soundtrack is among my favorite. I'm humming one of the tunes I typed this. I own Viking, but I'm ashamed to admit I haven't played it yet. Viking is good. Um, I actually really I, I, Vikings was the first uh, uh, expedition game that I played, and I actually quite liked it a bit. Um, timers aside, right? Uh, timers aside, uh, yeah. inside joke. But yeah, okay. uh, yeah uh, it's really cool to see a fan of Conquistadors in chat. I think you hopefully if you haven't tried the demo, we really encourage you to. Demo is live right now um, for expedition as well. We did bring back a lot of the things from Conquistador that we had removed in Vikings. So I think someone who's a fan of Conquistador will find that Rome is a little bit more in that vein than Viking was. It's like a hybrid of the two games. Also, so, Viking um, also has a great soundtrack, so you can hum that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, so I'm, gonna, I'm about to go in here, and this is going to trigger a whole sequence, but this is, I think, when we are talking about before, narrative context for each encounter. So when you're building these spaces, there is a thought process even before you get to... I mean, I guess you're thinking about combat at the same time, but there's a thought process about what you want to have happen here narratively. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that, Jonas, and, and just say how, even with this encounter, what was the thought process you're trying to figure out how to frame and build this encounter space? Yeah, so we, one of the things I also mentioned in the, de in the dev diary is that it's almost like you're a, a SWAT team of antiquity, like you're hitting these guys there in, in a guarded compound in the middle of a well-populated city. So it should feel like there's, there's quite a lot of second-order effects to you starting a fight there. Um, there are three different entrances, which uh, I believe Hans play placed, so that was um, a way to give you, to reward you for scouting around the compound and, and trying to analyze the tactical situation to find, to find out which direction you would want to enter from. And the, the flow of the fight does feel different depending on whether you go in the back, the side, or the front. And otherwise, we just wanted to feel like a city fight. So. Lots of really close together buildings. Um, uh, civilians that sort of run away when the fighting starts, they run and get the city guards that then join the fight, so there's a lot going on. I'm gonna go ahead and walk Enemies, up here and show you this thing. Gods protect me. I'm gonna turn on the overlay, just as I like playing with the overlay on. So you can hear these are the civilians out here on the outside. I guess these are the ones here. So these, these guys are all going to start running away once things start. And I know you talked about this in the diary too. And again, if you haven't read the diary and are interested in learning more about um, the details of how we make a game like this, you can read it on our community site, community.expeditionseries.com. Um, we have a lot of content on there that you can poke into. It really goes into the behind the scenes of what we're doing for the game. Shows off quite a bit of, of, of visuals and, and content there. Um, so one thing I remember talking about in the diary is the difference between open and closed um, spaces and creating different feelings. So would you consider this more of a closed space or an open space? Like, how would you term this? This is a fairly open space, this courtyard. Um, there's some cover around the sides, but you'll be in a pretty vulnerable position if you place yourself in the middle of this courtyard, especially since there are four archers on the rooftops of the buildings. And from up there, they have quite a bit of a bonus to their range, so they can shoot you pretty much anywhere. Um, so mostly you should prioritize kind of trying to lock down those arches. Yeah, I think it's actually quite interesting because I, I almost feel like I'm I'm in a narrow space when I'm down in the courtyard. There, there's a few, quite a few hexes, not like it's that small of a combat area, but because the buildings are around you, you feel enclosed. But as soon as you move yourself up onto the houses, then suddenly you're elevated and everything becomes much more yeah, freeform. So for what it's worth, chat, I have not played this encounter since its newest incarnation. Um, so this is going to be first time for me. I'm probably going to screw up and maybe lose. We'll see how it goes. Let's see. Well, I have... because I'm nice, I overleveled you a little bit for this fight. So hopefully you won't have too hard of a time. Go with... No, I'm going to go with... Flash. And then... Do shiv? Oh, that's not going to kill him, is it? That's alright, he can't take a shot now. Alright, so he's kind of dealt with a little bit. Do I have Slash? Do yeah, cutting the punch works the same way. This is one of the sort of advanced strategies of the game, which we don't really teach you. You just sort of have to infer it based on the rule set of the game, which is that when you have a melee character standing next to an archer, you've sort of locked down that archer. They can't shoot you in melee without 
you getting an attack of opportunity on them. However, because he's placed where, where he is, like he's locking down the archer that he didn't quite kill, but he's exposed uh, from all the other archers. He's not, not in any cover. I'm so I'm it. interested in to see how, how, how that will turn out. I yeah, am he, too. He's some moves. I think I want to blow up Oh man, the problem is I can't get through this guy because of the attack of opportunity, and I want to lock down at least two of them. Um, does he have that thing that allows him to ignore attack of opportunity? Uh, it's, I believe that is the f last skill in the list. Uh, of the oh, it's second to last, sorry. Yeah, there so I have... How much focus do I have right now? I have six. Okay, so I'm going to use this. And then he has Marathon. He does. But that would... Oh, he's not going to get... Well, at least I can get him up there and, um, and lock him down. But as we yeah, lock down this guy, it's going to be harder to get to. Mm -hmm. So let me give some uh, insight to chat for what Marathon does. It's a skill we've been talking about in quite a few streams, I think. Essentially, Marathon, when used, gives you infinite movement points, but only until where you stop. And then that means you can't take multiple different movement paths, you'll have to f find whatever one movement path that the pathfinding system draws to you and then it'll take you that whole way. That means that you might take a lot of attacks opportunity, um, go into interrupt areas, traps maybe, um, but you can run very down far uh, if that's what you wish to. So, what I did is I brought Bestia up there and then used um, Dodge to give him a chance to kind of survive any attack he may get. But hopefully the archer just tries to shoot and I hurt him. Um, I kind of want to lock that archer down too. I don't know if I'm going to get up there. So I think... Does she also have Slash? No. Hmm... I could try to do... Let's see, well, can he even reach up that far? He could. No, he can't. So I don't even know if I have anyone that can get there. Okay, so he could. So maybe I can... Now that bandit that is blocking you, so if you clear him off, you should have a easier path onto the roof. You won't have to go around your own guy. Remember that you can go, you can move through your allies' spaces now, which is a new thing that you couldn't do in Viking. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out the best way to clear that path. If I go here, I don't think I can kill him. Yet. Damn it, yeah, oh, I didn't think so. Uh, nope. So what I could do... Hmm. Sorry, I'm not even watching shot. I'm trying to figure out how to do this thing. It's my, my first. Let's do not crippling shot. Yeah, crippling shot. Make sure he dies. Someone asked what was the inspiration behind the colors for the movement. Honestly, uh, traffic lights. You know, green is go, yellow is you can go, but there'll be consequences, in which case you'll spend your action point, and red is no go. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh -oh. So, if I do knock down, that'll straight up kill him, then homeboy can get up here without any air. Ah, look! No, Figure it out. Nice. Give me a second to piece it all together, because I haven't done this. And now I can uh, thwacky thwack Mr. Archer Boy. That's a good skill if you're surrounded. Unfortunately, you didn't quite make the most of it, but still, it's a nice wallop. Oh, yeah, good point. Oh, it's still 11 to... Th oh, I guess I could have done the weekend instead. So I think I have still my archer move left, and she can still attack somebody. So maybe what I'll do is this. I have an idea. So let's see if I can get this to work. Uh, we're going to... I'm glad you're on our side. Nice. You should be. And then okay, if I go... Can... Sorry? Uh, no, it's like I li really like these little exchanges you can get during combat. They're quite procedural, so 
you could have gotten this specific exchange any time when the era crits, but only if Kaiser is there. So uh, I have a lot of fun putting these little exchanges into the combat dialogue. All right, so I think I'm going to go over here because if I kill Homeboy, oh, I shouldn't waste the fire arrow. That was a bad decision. But now I get my action back, so I think I will. Right, if you if you notice, because you have um, because Yulia has her her own armor on, there's a percentage chance that when you use a skill with a charge, you get that charge back and it triggered. So you still have both. Oh of the fire snap! Arrow. See, I didn't even see that build. That's bad. That's badass. I like that. So I didn't actually burn the fire arrow that I used. Well, that <laughs> attacks. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Julia's on a, she's on a run, man. Now swap to her melee weapons and go and finish him off on the ground. Uh, he's. Uh, I don't think I'll have the move left. Ah, oh, you're right. You don't have movement. I would yeah. use interrupt. Oh, yeah, interrupt. Or quick shot him. Kill him on the ground. So bloodthirsty. Uh, I don't think... Can you shoot someone on the ground with quick shot? Oh, you totally can. Uh, I can't see anybody else. Oh, I can see him, actually. Alright, let's do that. We'll, we'll quick shot him. And quick shot him. Alright, look at that. What do you think, chat? Did I do okay? Chat approved? Nice. I approve. So, before doing, um, uh, before I, 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 I move this turn, I think it'd be kind of cool to talk about, so so my thought process as a, as a player, right, so I'm playing this. There is a lot that goes into, I think, the the pathing and, and, and how you move through a space that is one of the reasons why, unlike some other games in, the, uh, in this genre, like turn-based strategy games, um, all of our maps are very handcrafted. And it has to do with things like attacks of opportunity or these kind of lockdown options where you're right next to someone. All of that is part of, I think, the core combat design experience that really kind of led us we i mean very briefly but there were some conversations at the beginning about more procedurally generated maps and more repetitive content um, i know you we talked about that in the very very early prototype days about whether that was a direction we wanted to go in or not and we went this direction because of exactly what you just saw happen like there is this thought process of how do i use these different skills like marathon combined with the verticality and like where i can get hit and where i can't like all of that kind of goes into play and it really does I think need that handcrafted nature to pull that off. I mean, would you did I summarize that well? Do you think, Jonas? Is that a good way to kind of articulate that thought process? Definitely. Um, one of the one of the ways we saw ourselves when we all the way back when we made Conquistador was we were comparing ourselves to Heroes of Might and Magic, and we thought one of the things we could bring to it was first of all, obviously, a lot more story, um, but then also in in hand in hand with that story more handcrafted battlefields with more variation, more interesting tactical layouts that aren't just like a chessboard, basically. Um, I think we took it way, way further on Rome. Part of that is because Hans was on board this time, so we had someone who was um, dedicated to making every encounter interesting and handcrafting all of the tactical situations, all of the enemy setups. We didn't have that on Viking. Um, I was setting up all of the encounters in addition to writing all the story, so obviously less attention could be paid to it. And just having hands here to, to, to really pay attention to all of these things and make sure that all the encounters are interesting means that over the course of this 65 hour game, you're gonna feel a lot less repetition. It's not, it, 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 it has much more variation and, and will challenge your tactical understanding in interesting and different ways. Yeah. Um, uh, Aldilian or uh, 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 Adel, Adeline, Adeline, uh, hopefully I got your name right. Um, there are five core companions to the game, um, so uh, you, know, if you want to just rattle them off really quick, so I don't, I, I don't take words out of your mouth. Yeah, I gave you all of them in this. You could enter this mission without any of them, the only generic uh, Praetorians, but I think it was more fun to give you the companions. So they are from left to right, uh, skipping your own character. Bestia Tabat, who is a, a former gladiator in, in the game, his class is uh, light infantry, so fast, deadly. Kaiso Quinctius Aquilinus who is a heavy with a big shield and lots of toughness. Uh, Deanira is um, a Scythian sort of Amazon warrior who is also a, sort of a spear and shield kind of character. And then Yulia Kalida, our sneaky spy archer character. 
And finally, Cineros, who is your personal slave, um, personal servus, as the Romans would say, so kind of like a teacher. Uh, he's a healer, he's a, a, a rear line guy with a long spear or staff, and then he has a, a, a bit of a rough and tumble background that makes him quite competent in a fight. More than you'd expect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's see what the enemy does. Help! Someone stop them! Fight it's for us! the Romans started this! I saw it! Help! Warriors of the We didn't start anything! What's she talking about? We're just good old, good old Roman! Sure. So here's what I was talking about where, because there are several different enemies positioned outside of the immediate combat area, you kind of start in the middle of things, and as the fight progresses, the enemies that were um, on the outskirts of the fight will gradually reach and move and join the fight. So they serve, they serve as reinforcements, except that they're there from the beginning and you know they're finite. The By the way, did you see that sick dodge? I did. Very nice. Pretty the great. Let us move. Uh, the the enemies you're fighting inside the compounds are all uh, untrained, like they count as bandits, which means you get your action points back when you kill them. These guys that are joining now from outside the soldiers that were summoned by the civilians, they are professionally trained military, so you will not be gaining your action points back from killing them. And they are a bit tougher in general. Nothing like yeah. you cover in general, guys, <laughs> ruin your day. All right, I'm gonna see if I can kill this clown. I'm the different just... kind of, uh, not just the classes in combat, but also like the different, um, let's just call it tiers of enemies, is something that we work a lot on, kind of generalizing, so it's always easily understandable for the player. Um, but what's very much needed to create that always uh, narrative sensible setting, but also with a very unique uh, distinction between each of the different classes. So like the civilians, as you saw, running away, that's what they're going to be doing in most cases. In view, very few cases you fight them, you clearly get your action point back from um, them being untrained and they don't have any special skills whatever to, de to deal with. And you have the bandits, which you also get your action points back from killing. They wear no armor, uh, but they have more stuff they can do uh, than the civilians. So you, we kind of try to create those different like steps and progression of the, the enemies. And in this fight, you kind of get to deal with all of them. I made a mistake there. I used that, that in the wrong order. It was my fault. But on the plus side, the special ability of the Electrum and Kopesh triggered, which set your target on fire. Yeah, yeah, I saw that one. Yeah, somebody was asking about that since uh, somebody spotted that Kopesh. Uh, we did have uh, one of our friends is a um, medieval um, combat. Uh, expert and we used we leaned on him quite heavily for advice on um, equipment and the visual design of that equipment and so on so um, yes we did have an advisor in these matters I think I'm gonna do sneak attack oh a quick note ruling the dwarf to answer your question um, there is actually a reinforcements ticker visible on screen right below the victory conditions box when there are f infinite reinforcements and it counts down to the next wave. Since there is no reinforcement ticker in this fight, you know that there won't be any more spawns. What you what you already have in this fight is what you'll have to deal with. Yeah, so no no's no no's I'm thinking the exact same way and I think I've almost got them all down, so right? You should take the fight up to the archers on the roof so you narrow down the enemy lines. I am doing that. Only one archer left and I'm on turn two. Look at see yeah, we put this in. I, 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 I got some chops. I may be a producer, but I got some chops. I know, I know how to do some video games, video games. All right, let's see what else we got going on here. You're doing pretty these all right. Are, these clowns are coming in. These clowns are coming in. So I think what's pretty interesting with this fight as well, since all the enemies inside the compound are bandits, mm -hmm. uh, therefore quite unarmored, and gives you, give your action points back, you can clear out a lot of them pretty fast, and you should, otherwise you'll get overwhelmed once the enemies from outside also start coming. But you've been good at clearing them out, and that, mean, that means that suddenly now you have the compound. The the thing that Jonas mentioned about you being a SWAT team, kind of breaking into the prison, you've done that, but now the military was called upon from outside the prison, and they're coming to uh, to deal with you, uh, who now have the compound. And I think I think that kind of uh, switch is, is really interesting. First you were looking at the, the level from like one angle, how do you approach this problem? But then the situation develops. Oh, right. You step in a trap and mess up, and now you have to rethink your, your tactics. 
Yeah, yeah you walk on the caltrops. Do it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jonas right gave you way, way too, way too good care. Just, just step into the caltrops, Brad. I did. I did overlevel you for this fight. Yeah, maybe too much. Okay. I'm um, not doing. I'm not doing. I'm not doing as great as I think. It's just the leveling that's got me down. No, well, no, you're doing quite well. You're playing it very sensibly. Um, there's also um, some tactical well, items picking up some new level that you can see with the outlines. I'm gonna change approach then from what I was gonna do, a little bit. We'll see. Um, first off, I, I want to kill this clown because I want to kill him, but I don't think that's gonna kill him. That will. Did not trigger the super special awesome move that time though. So let's see if I can then. Mm -hmm. Alida, you make Almost. My sisters look like delicate flowers. Oh, you know what? Oh, I could probably just throw it. this rock at him and kill him. <laughs> that would be yes. Of legend. <laughs> That's true. Do it. Kill him with a rock. Thank you. All also, right. I actually have. Oh. <laughs> in your um. In that your was one very very. Hardly thrown rock, right? Yeah, I think actually you could have also swapped to your unarmed weapon set, and I believe yeah. I gave you, you throw something skill, which is also just throwing a rock at someone, um, and that doesn't have to use charges. But this worked. Uh, can I use marathon again? I totally could. Uh, you didn't use courage, but one. Huh? You didn't use it before, actually. You just did a normal move. No, no, no. I used marathon. I thought before, didn't I? No. Oh, I didn't need. I didn't do it, huh? Okay. Let's see, okay, so I think now that this kid's dead, these guys are the ones that are gonna come in next, but they're pretty not tough. So oh he can't move anymore. Alright. So we will kinda reorganize here and let them come down to us and get away from these caltrops, because forget that. Yeah, we're just gonna like reorganize we can't really reach them right now, so I think it's better to let them come in. I want to let them come in, Pincer. I love uh, um, uh, uh, Brad the Archer Killer. Uh, Nadine, I think you have. Uh, oh, I don't know if you have a mod in chat today. Are you on? Can you chat mod that one post, please? Thank you. You see that, right? Yeah. So, Eldelene asked... We actually had, uh, had... Some people are on, on holiday right now, so our, our normal mods are, are not in, so we're having to do a little bit more uh, manual modding. We'll get that taken care of. <clears throat> uh, no, no, so I think... Three. Yes, um, placing a character next to the ladder will prevent anyone from going up or down the ladder. So that's a way for you to control the pathing of the level. Actually, I was watching a uh, Burger Black stream on Friday night, and... Uh, <laughs> Burger Black on the warehouse mission just posted his uh, sword and the shield guy right on top of the ladder and watched all of them just sit there at the bottom not being able to get up and he just like look at me I got tactics you guys can't read you know he, he was having a lot of fun with that so definitely it's a viable strategy if you have kind of a choke point there yeah I will say yeah. that on, on Lesbos the enemies have quite quite limited skill set later in the game most of the enemies have some way to to deal with um, you being a high ground mainly with picking up stuff or ranged attacks. You know what? Shoo. See, no nos, you just made me consider something. I should throw Julia up because like why not? <laughs> That's also yeah. free peel uh free peel out there. Yeah, but she has an epic bow, she doesn't need Pila. She's gonna just like own face with the bow. All Romans need Pila. And also no nos, the uh, the enemies that are coming in now have Pila that they can throw up at you if you're trying to make that move. So all right, fine. I'll get the free peeler. This Sorry. fight is kind of lacking some fire. Why didn't you bring some fire for Brad Jonas? Uh, wait. This is the armor I... shredding thing, though, so that may Why be a waste of it. Bring some fire? Yeah. Like... Ooh, you know what? Let, let's caltrops. Why not? Walk through that, punks. Nice. That's a good move. Oh, yeah. I am the archer killer, but I'm also the archer. I am all things. All right. Let's see what they do. Yeah, no, no, you're 100 percent right. Oh, Julia should always be up on the roof. Yeah, hangs heavy with cow drops. Cow drops. Nice. Come, Dude, that's I a bad move, buddy. Uh, 
cow drops. <laughs> so, some of the enemies coming in here are... Uh, it's um, so fun watching these like, we have nowhere else to go, I guess we're going through! That's yep. a bad choice! Love it. Uh, some of the enemies coming in here are uh, pill tests. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, what, what's my name? What's my name, chat? What's my name? Get killed by what's archers, bro. my Brad? name? That's right, Brad the Archer Killer. Last one. Alright, sweet, they're all dead. Sorry, Jonas, I was just having fun. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so the Pell Tests are one of the special Egyptian classes. You won't be meeting them anywhere else. And they have uh, a set of javelins that they bring into combat, and they have a special ability that is basically Overwatch, but with javelins. So normally you would just move your shield guy in to take that Overwatch hit, because you can deflect arrows. But javelins are specifically good against shield, so you usually... Yeah, you have to kind of sacrifice your shield in order to um, kill that Overwatch. Yeah. Oh, so he's overwatching over here, it looked like, right? Yeah. On top of that, Jonas, he also has his shield out. So you would also if usually be able to shoot back at enemy archers with your own archers, like not tricking it when, when you just shoot them. But this guy has a shield, so you can't do that either. You need to figure out how you get out of that. And he's got you in a pretty good angle, Brad. What are you going to do? You are right. That makes me unhappy. <laughs> Well, like we can planning. almost, we, we can hear Brad's brain churning, like, what will I do, what will I do, what will I do, look at all the skills. Yeah, so Wait, also, can, if, I attack, if I attack homeboys, I actually don't know this, if I attack homeboys, is it going to cancel his overwatch? Nope. It won't. There are specific uh, attacks, like if you push him or stun him, stuff like knock him on the ground, that would naturally interrupt it. Yeah, but I only have a way to do that. I, mean, I, I only think I can hit him with this, uh... Hmm... Yeah, he's got you well locked down. You'd have to kind of uh, hit him from behind, but he's put himself in a good position, so you can't do that. Clever girl! Oh, okay, I have a cool suggestion. I'm not even sure if that's gonna work. You could use defensive strike, which you have on Kaiso, on the guy on the ground. That will give you deflecting, and that could actually block the pilum coming at you from the pel test. Or you could just throw this all giant on him, and then the torch to set everything on fire. Hey, what about the, uh, the poor lions, though? Forget it. All right, poor lions. We're gonna uh, we're gonna do something crazy. <gasps> Bye. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if that was... I'm not sure how smart that was, but I mean, we did it. So... You're still locked down. And yes, yeah, but no. now we're... Uh, at least I, I was productive with the turn, right? Uh, um, and I can go... I can't hit these guys because I can't get my... My... Well... Wait a second. Still so we'll, won't we'll deal I with the guy who's overwatching. Oh, but it's good to take that shield, though. Yeah. So, uh, and then I can cripple it, well... But I get the accuracy bonus from being up high. Oh, yeah, so overwatch reduces your range. Oh, sorry, overdrawn shot reduces your range. Uh, but because you are standing that high up, your range is increased by your height, so it cancels each other out, basically. Very nice. Good move. Uh, the thing is, I don't think I have any other way to mess with this kid. I mean, if I go in here, I'm walking into the fire, so I kind of, like, stuck myself. You can try the thing out I mentioned. I mean, the main problem is that whenever you move, you'll get hit, right? Unless you have something that can block it. I don't have anything that can block it. Well, I'm actually not sure it will work, but you do have a skill that applies deflective to yourself. That might deflect the pillar when it comes at you. That's on Kaizo. He has defensive strike. It's the blue skill. That one you can use on the guy on the ground. I believe. If you're adjacent I wonder to. if I should just let these guys burn in a fire and then just go to the other side, maybe. See, now the stream has just become help Brad figure out how to beat this thing. We got like five minutes. Yeah. 
I knew, we were actually we were talking about. Do we need to have a script for this thing? Are we gonna talk about? It? I'm like, I think we're just gonna play the mission. The uh, all right, you know what? Let's let's do this. Like, I can't, I can't even move this way because homeboy's still gonna shoot me. Yep. Right. Man, back. that AI really did. That's a powerful skill. That's annoying. All right, whatever. We'll um get the guy on the ground with it. Yeah, finish that guy off. Show off that cool ground attack animation. And then see so if this will block the it, that, right? That did you make, yeah, that made you deflect, def deflecting. So now you should be fine if you move. Should be. <laughs> was not fine. It was not fine. <laughs> it was the opposite of fine. Even the com the combat design is like, I wonder if this combo works. Let's find out. <laughs> nope. Uh, it makes sense. All right, well, at least that should be, should be done now, right? So now I can just kick this guy's butt. All right, so let's just do the thing. And that's, the, that's the fun part of working on such a complex game with a lot of like these little emergent second order effects is even having worked on it for so long and played it so many times you still find these combinations where you're not completely sure how like which rule is going to override which rule I think that's quite fun yeah it was yeah. one of the main things we wanted to do with the weapon skill system as well as that you very fast grow like accustomed to specific combinations of skills and you you want to use them, but at some point you might find a weapon so good that you should you should really swap, and then suddenly you're forced to try something completely new. You learn about new ways to play the game, and that's always super interesting, uh, especially when you're in this situation where you just don't know what to do, or at least you can't easily see the optimal solution. I mean, I think she can tank those two guys for a turn, so we're gonna go up and knock one of them down, just knock to take one of them. Knockdown doesn't work on shields. Uh, you have to remove the shield first. Okay, that's sad, but good to know. Because shields um, block no, most status effects as well. That's why. Oh, and that didn't really do much to the way. Okay, so see now I'm now I'm I'm on hard by the way. Uh, no, no, no. Well, we have we have. Um, let me do the next turn. I, I took so long with this. I don't think we're gonna get a chance to finish it before. Um, Oh, come on! <laughs> so that's fun. Now she can. That's cool. At least this person's going to die. That's a fire with uh, brutal. And you did get uh, to use your protecting up there, so... That saved Kaiser some help. All right, let's uh, let's kill this boy. Glancing back. Oh, what? <gasps> Come on. Nice. Come on. <laughs> Fine. Burn a fire, you silly man. All right. Good job. I think I could just quick shot the kid. Wait. Oh, I can't see them. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, so that's always a fun thing with being on uh, very high buildings and you have the drop off where you can't see people, is using proper line of sight. That's why it almost creates like two different plateaus in the level, right? You, if people are far away you can shoot and on the, on the other rooftops without a problem unless they're in cover. But people down in the alleys will be hard to spot, they can kind of stay safe there. Yeah, yeah. Well, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to finish this encounter, so I guess maybe, you know what I'll do? I will save it, and maybe we'll pick this up um, on another stream. Dev stream 13 didn't finish. <laughs> All right, so at least I have it saved. So before we, um, uh, I do want to take at least a few minutes to answer some of the questions that came up on the stream. Um, I hope you guys had a fun time seeing kind of a sneak peek on some of the more complex encounters. I'm... I'm I feel like I know our game pretty well, and I, I, I know quite a bit of the mechanics, and even, you know, there's a lot of things that come up circumstantially based on the way the spaces were built, and I, I think that's really, really cool. Um, so, maybe that shows you, I know there were a lot of questions coming up in chat on the other streams where it's like, you know, how uh, uh, how complex does all this stuff get? You know, how, 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 how deep does it get? And I think the answer is there's a lot of mechanics that get introduced as you progress that can change things up. So, let's take the last five minutes and try to jump through some questions. Um, so, um, Adeline actually asked, is there any each Easter eggs in the game or caveats to the previous, or, or call-outs, I guess, probably. He says caveats, but I think he meant call-outs to the previous games. 
So I know there are cat Easter eggs, right? Because there's a lot of uh, cat fans in the dev team. Yeah, we have some cat-related Easter eggs. We have a fair few Easter eggs, actually. We had a whole little Easter egg spree um, right before the demo, actually, where we just went went over the game and added a bunch of Easter eggs. So yeah, there's, there's definitely some fun things to find if you uh, pay special attention. In fact, there's a really cool Easter egg in the demo, and I don't know if anyone found it, because I haven't seen anyone discussing it. Uh, I, okay. oh, I've seen my friend found it, the very first guy I watched play the game. Uh, I don't think he realized there was a, an easter egg. Um, and then I haven't seen anyone else find it. I see, that's a little uh, bit I, I do know that I was on a stream uh, where they asked if you can pet a cat. So is there a way to pet a cat, like an action, like a pet action? No, sadly no, no cat petting. Oh. But you can... I'm not gonna give away, there's, there's some, something cat related in there. Yeah, yes, Giannis, more than maybe, maybe, maybe for uh, maybe for patch like patch one, a quality of life improvement that everyone asked for, which is cat petting. Uh, sure, we'll uh, arrange a, a more cat session just to get a bunch of uh, animal petting animations out. Uh, another question that I actually saw come up a lot too. Uh, Far Flame CZ asks, can you throw archers down from the roofs? So can you throw people off of buildings? I don't think we have an ability to knock people off buildings, do we? No, we can't do that. Uh, but no, on the uh, side, they also can't do it to you. Natural thing to want, but I know we, it, there's a lot of complexity in trying to have that kind of feature or system in there, so we didn't introduce. Um, so I think you answered the question from Rule and the Dwarf about the reinforcements. Do I need to ask the, answer that one? I think you covered that when we were talking through the encounter. Okay. Um, let's see. Talked about that one. Talked about that one. Uh, okay, this is a good one actually. I, I don't. I think there is some of this in there. So Nono's asks, are there environmental damage like big rocks rolling in line and damaging anyone in the way? Are there environmental interactions? Um, that's kind of a complex answer because there there are things that are not your characters that can do stuff to you or that you can use to do other things across the field. But there's nothing like a big boulder that you can roll like a like a, an action item like that. Is there? There's a, a very cool one uh, demonstrated with a GIF in the dev diary, if you go and watch that one, where the um, there's an oil barrel, and the AI is very good at targeting those oil barrels, especially if you leave anyone close to them. So there, there's a, a few things like that in the game. I know in a few, uh, after the holidays when we come back and we're getting closer to launch, we're going to do a dev diary and dev stream on sieges, which are kind of our epic boss combat encounters. Um, they're multi-phase, there's a lot of different things going on, and I know there are some... Uh, sieges that have things like catapults that you can, um, uh, the enemy can leverage and you can leverage right. for other phases of the fight. So there are some kind of also complex mechanics, but they're very special case to a particular um, encounter set. So they're not like a general thing where you'll run into a boulder and you do this with it. Except for like the the, the, the oil barrel and things that Jonas was mentioning. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, no, I think you answered this too. Uh, shooting from high ground definitely gives you a bonus terrain. Um, quite a big bonus, actually, depending on how you are. I, I actually was watching, uh, I think it was Patrick, uh, one of the streamers on uh, Sunday, and he was getting angry because there was a, a, a an archer at the top part of um, a building in that pacification quest that was shooting all the way down to the beach. And he's like, how is he shooting so far? I can't shoot that far. Well, I mean, he's on top of a building, man. Like, what do you, uh, <laughs> what do you expect? <laughs> We actually had, um, I, I don't know if I should mention this, but we had a, a QA who found a particular place in the game where you could shoot, I think you could f shoot like 300 meters because it oh was my God. So, like, the whole level was so high up. And so we, we ended up putting a cap on it. So there's like a, a max, max distance that you can shoot, but that was pretty funny. The, the height yeah. bonus for archery is really, really good. Yeah. Um, Adelaine, we, we're not talking about DLC or expansion plans right now. Um, I will say with no details, there are um, uh, plans for the title after launch, and um, we'll talk about those once we get past launch, but everyone's already eager now just to hear about the base game, so all of our conversations and, and are going to be focused around that, and then once the game goes live, and hopefully you all love it and have a good time playing it, uh, we'll, we'll get into our, our future plans after that. Let's see, I have like a minute or two left. Let me see if I can grab one or two more quick questions. Um, I saw Rulin the Dwarf, he asked if there's any jump skills in the game, and we don't have specific skills that perform jumps, we do however have uh, pathing systems in the game where you like jump down, 
from ledges, and that's something you can read about in the dev diary as well. I think there's multiple showcases of it, and that kind of creates a, it's almost like a one-way ladder, right? It allows you to go down from high ground and connects more complex paths, but you can't go up back then. A few places you can maybe crop, like jump across a, a cast or something like that. Yeah, I don't want to spoil anything for those that haven't played the free demo yet. And again, there is a free demo of Expeditions Rome available right now on Steam. You can download it, you can play it, you can let us know what you think. Um, and for a little small uh, side note that we've told people, but it's just I want to make sure everyone hears it. Any save progression you make on the demo is instantly usable in the full game when it comes out in January 20th. So if you get to the end or if you have different uh, character paths you go through, you can take all of those save games and just use them immediately when the game goes live. Uh, there is an encounter in the demo that I know, um, uh, both from my own personal experience and watching some of the streamers, um, they were always caught off guard, but also kind of pleasantly, uh, like, like enjoying it when enemies would just all of a sudden jump down, and like, I didn't know you could do that, oh no! Like, it changes the whole, so there's a little bit of, like, hidden tutorialization, and like, oh yeah, here's an encounter where guys are gonna jump down on you, and, uh, that's a thing, and you can do it too, yeah. uh, definitely. It's it's something we didn't get to talk too much about, but for us to, to put in small hints about how you should approach a level strategically is always really, really fun. But also to have hidden things that you can find yourself or be revealed to you through the AI is always, like, it adds more complexity that you didn't see right off the bat. Absolutely. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take one last question. Um, let's see. You, you answered the armor equipment question. I'll say, well, I'm going to take two things. One more I want to try to grab. So, uh, Morgan uh, Boop Boo, I think, or Boo Boo, um, uh, or Mo, Re Mo Region Boo Boo, I think is actually the name. Um, we actually had, uh, if you go back in time, um, there was a dev diary and dev stream we did with the art team back um, with August, our art director, and uh, we talked quite a bit about just the crazy amount of research the, the team did uh, for historical context. There's a massive folder with so many different images and, and uh, references from historical artifacts to drawings that people got from different uh, um, uh, documents back then. Um, I know that August was reading a lot, uh, not just in visuals, but also reading about how some of these things were put together. And uh, there's a lot of research and, and um, uh, you know exploration to try to bring the world to life in the most organic way we could, while still presenting the story and the fantasy that we wanted to of it being a role-playing game with this, these combat mechanics and whatnot. So, um, I can tell you the research was tremendous um, and uh, it's it's obviously sometimes we have to take a little bit of liberty because it is a game and the game needs to be fun and we can't just uh, it has to look really cool so we can't be exactly one to one with historical accuracy but there's a lot in there and if you like that kind of stuff there's a couple dev diaries that dive into that. One last real quick question because um, I think it was a fun one, it's a quick one. Farflame CZ asks who the best melee character from your uh, companions on the stream would be. And they assume Kaiso is the best in defense, but for attack. So, out of the guys that you gave me, Jonas, and, and um, who would you think is the best melee character in that grouping? I think it's a toss-up between Bestia and, perhaps surprisingly, Cineros. Um, because the two-handed weapons have really high damage output, but obviously you can attack more with Bestia. So I think Bestia is very good at handling multiple targets, and Cineros is really good against, like, you know, single target damage. So they, it, I think it's about a toss-up between those two. Awesome, old man Cineros. He's uh, yeah. still sh shows off. He's, he's still he still got it. Don't underestimate him. Yeah, yeah. Well, everyone, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this look into Memphis. The discussion about how we build our encounters and some of that pre uh, frame of uh, reference for you as you're going through the game. Um, we are going to be taking uh, the holiday break off next week, but we'll be right back the first week of January with a new dev stream. And if I remember correctly, Jonas, the next one is going to be on um, AI design and how the AI um, works in different encounter spaces. So if you're interested in how the AI works, I think you'll have a lot of fun with that. Um, we'll be playing more. Um, so mark your calendars for, I think it's January 5th, um, which is the Wednesday after we come back, uh, same time. And um, we'll uh, have a great stream for you there. We'll show another new map for the first time. We'll play some more stuff. We'll show off the AI. We'll have our friends back here to, to hang out with us. Uh, Hans? Great seeing you. I hear you're going on a ski trip. Hope you have a good holiday. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm still hoping I can go. Hopefully Italy doesn't get closed and I get to ski in the, in the Alps. That would be great. I know all of you earned a, a very good break for this holiday with all the, the push for the demo and, and, and obviously coming back and finishing off for the release. So uh, thanks for being a guest and, and hope you have a great time. Jonas, you have a great holiday too. Do you want to say anything last to the, the, to the audience before we close it? Just to... Uh, it 
please go and get the demo and play it if you haven't already and let us know what you think about it and how you enjoyed it uh, on the Discord channel because we really, really like uh, reading all your feedback and we have a lot of um, a lot of fun with that. We are actioning on some of them. So if you if you put your notes in, we're reading them and and, and taking some, uh, some actions from those directly. So Nadine and everyone in the background, thank you so much for helping us make this stream happen today. Everyone have a great, safe holidays. Enjoy yourselves. And we'll see you back here on this channel same time on this, on January uh, 5th in the new year in 2022. Have a great one, everyone. Cheers. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. <laughs>